Uh, obviously, you are all here in regards to the, evic the eviction on Magnolia regarding the Moms for Housing uh, incident. Um, I'll have to take you back a little bit in the calendar, back to November, uh, when the mothers uh, occupied the residents uh, on Magnolia. Uh, during that time, they unlawfully entered that dwelling and established uh, uh, residency in that location. Uh, during that time, uh, a, a civil process was started to, to do an eviction. There were multiple hearings in regards to that, tremendous amount of due process uh, that occurred between uh, the, both the plaintiffs and defendants. As a result of that, uh, last Friday, uh, an order was issued by the Alameda County Superior Court uh, mandating that we evict uh, the occupants of the Magnolia residence. So we had five days to complete that. Uh, typically, we're allowed about 180 days to do an eviction, uh, but the way that this eviction was, was ordered, uh, it left us with a five-day window. Uh, over the last uh, week, there's been a tremendous uh, buildup in regards to attention for this case. We've seen a tremendous amount of attention, uh, protest, and uh, momentum out on Magnolia, and uh, the, the Moms for Housing uh, group has garnered a lot of attention in regards to, to their movement. Um, that put uh, our office in a very uh, tr tricky position in regards to trying to deal with this situation. So uh, we said from the get-go that we did not want to have any type of confrontation, that we wanted to keep this uh, as simple and, and as low-key as possible. Uh, I'll explain later why I believe we accomplished that today. Um, but there was a tremendous amount of, of work that went into this, uh, and we had to think outside the box a little bit because this was not your typical eviction uh, that we routinely do. So um, we had a lot of information uh, from within inside the home um, that there was concerns for officer safety and concerns for safety of anybody that was going to intercede in, the, in this incident. So we had to uh, work to find the right time and the right day to do this, knowing that we were up against that five day window and as the as the days began to tick by it seemed like the the energy level uh, really got ramped up so uh, we affected the uh, eviction this morning about 5 15 a.m that was by design when we arrived on scene there were about uh, five or so uh, people out front they were kind of keeping vigil throughout the night uh, looking out we had lookouts uh, we had different groups involved uh, in this movement um, some are associated with some of the violent protests that we have seen throughout the Bay Area. And we had reason to believe that had we gone in there at, at any time other than uh, the early morning hours, it was likely we would end up in a serious confrontation with those folks. So once we executed the eviction about five this morning, the doors were barricaded. Um, they had fortified the doors and making entry into the residence was very difficult. Um, they had come up with a system uh, and a way to uh, secure those doors to make them difficult for us to enter the home. So we could not enter the home traditionally uh, with a key or, or using a locksmith. Um, they were fortified in such a way that we had to use a, a ram and a tremendous amount of force to get through and defeat the uh, mechanisms that they had put in place. Uh, that was by design, not, not only the front door, but the back door as well. And so um, once we uh, were able to open the door, we then made multiple announcements into the residence. Um, we had an idea that there would be uh, several occupants in there. Uh, those people acknowledged that they were inside and they let us know that they would not come out um, and, or cooperate, but they, they were not going to be actively resisted and that they wanted to uh, be arrested peacefully. And so uh, we complied with that. They were detained in handcuffs without incident. No force was used. Uh, and then they were brought out to awaiting uh, patrol vehicles uh, and are now being booked into Santa Rita Jail. About that time uh, that we had the eviction uh, kind of complete, uh, I, uh, a call went out to a lot of the, the activists and the protesters who've been involved in this. And during the course of the next hour or so that we were on scene, a tremendous swell of people from around uh, the area came in and began to protest. Um, we did encounter quite a bit of hostility from those folks. Um, a lot of, most of it was verbal. Um, we did get some things thrown at us uh, and uh, there were some threats from people 
uh, in the crowd, but our personnel showed tremendous restraint in regards to, to dealing with this. And uh, there was no significant incident of force. There was no uh, injuries that were reported. Uh, and we basically were able to do this operation uh, in the presence of the entire world and all the media watching us uh, and come away with very little impact uh, in regards to doing this operation. I'm going to open it up for questions now. Uh, I have already shared a, a list of, th uh, there's three individuals that were arrested, uh, two females, which we believe are part of the Moms for Housing group, and, and a male that was also in the home with them. I can get you those names a bit later if you don't have them already. I will open it up for questions. I'll start over here. So you say you have reason to believe that the safety of officers would have been well, there, there, was, there was multiple safety concerns. Number one was the children that we knew uh, were in the home. But during the, the course of the last week, the, they had made a good decision to remove the children from the home, knowing that it was leading up to the final five days. So we really appreciate Moms for Housing for removing the children from that situation and kind of bringing down the level of concern, at least for us as law enforcement. Um, our second concern was the residents in the home. Um, we did not want to, we wanted to make sure that there was no issues uh, in there. And then obviously we want to be safe in doing our jobs uh, and we don't want to go into an environment where we had information and some uh, inside information that there, uh, there could have been threats to our safety. So there was a lot of things that we had to take into account. A lot of people are wondering why a SWAT team was called out for a choke for mom and children. That was the biggest thing I heard after they left. Yeah, that was not a SWAT team. So we did have members of our tactical team on site, but that was uh, mostly made up of deputies uh, and officers from our agency uh, who were working in multiple different capacities. We did have a tactical element out there and it was rather small. Uh, you've probably seen uh, them on some of the news footage that's out there, but we made um, tremendous steps to make sure that we did not look like a militarized force going in there we obviously know what the optics are. We did not want to go in there um, with a, a heavy footprint, and we tried to s stick to our basic uniforms and our basic uh, uh, lowest level approach to the situation. But knowing some of the threats that were out there and some of the things that had been said, um, we had to have uh, people on standby in the event of a, a severe emergency, including a, a ballistic vehicle in case we had to do uh, rescues of either citizens or people in the home or uh, officers on the scene. And what were the charges specifically? All, all of the charges are resisting and obstruction, obstructing uh, the eviction process. They're misdemeanors. And it was the two moms and the man, they were all three that were in the home that said, hey, when you guys come in, yeah. we're going to peacefully move away. Yeah, they peacefully uh, uh, did not, and they did not resist, and they peacefully gave up, uh, but they stated that they wanted to be arrested. And we did give them ample opportunity not to be arrested. We made multiple announcements for a period of about five minutes um, before uh, they were arrested. So they had ample time to comply with those Which organization orders. specifically were you concerned about? Is this the anti-police one? I don't uh, the, the, you know, I, I don't want to get into the naming all the different organizations, but there, there are organizations uh, out there and, and factions uh, that, that come into situations like this and they bring somewhat of a criminal element uh, I'm not sure that Moms for Housing necessarily condones that or was part of that, but uh, there were people that came in. There were people we know that flew into the Bay Area specifically to be a part of this problem and not a part of the solution. And uh, we had to deal with that and, and factor that in into our decision making. Do you know if they showed up in the later of the five, six o'clock hour after you've already? Some people showed up, yeah, but you know, I. Uh, th there were s some of those f folks we believe did show up this morning, or later in the morning after the eviction had already been completed uh, to protest as well. But uh, by and large, we were able to get out of there with any s significant issues. Has, has the owner of the house taken any steps to make sure that this isn't repeated? Yeah, I think that's a, a good question that everybody's concerned about. Well, what's stopping them from going in and reoccupying the home, right? So the house has been fortified. Uh, inside, the doors have been fortified. Um, it, if someone was to reoccupy the place at this point, they, they would be arrested for uh, a trespass charge. Um, it would be up to the city of Oakland and the Oakland Police Department to enforce that uh, once that complaint is brought forth by the owner. So the, the sheriff's office strictly was involved in the civil process 
of the eviction. Uh, it would not be our duty to, to go back and make an arrest for a trespass that would fall in the Oakland Police Department. Even though there will be belongings in the house, will the owner residents have a chance to get them? Yes, uh, the, the owner is charged with the safekeeping of that property and the owner has a certain amount of days to uh, return that property. Uh, we were not gonna do that today. Uh, I think it would have kind of inflamed the, the tensions out there to see property being moved uh, into storage uh, vehicles and whatnot. So we made the decision that that can be done at a later date, that is legal to do that. And at some point uh, they can do that. There was not a, a tremendous amount of property in that home. I actually went through it and walked through the house. I did not see a lot of property in that house. There was some very basic furnishings um, as the, the house was, um, it's pretty old. It's definitely in need of repair. Uh, I saw areas of mold uh, that were concerning uh, if you were going to stay in some of those rooms. So the house uh, did need a lot of work and it was not uh, heavily furnished. Is there any reason to believe that these groups or any concern these groups will target other homes in Oakland and do the same thing? That's definitely something uh, we're looking at, obviously, uh, that, that this is part of a movement and that they, there will be uh, other similar incidents. We won't know about that until they, they occur. Um, this is a, a lot of these issues are civil issues. Um, if you don't act within a certain amount of time, if law enforcement doesn't act immediately upon a trespass and time goes by and they establish kind of residency within that location, um, you kind of run into you kind of run from the criminal uh, penal code sections into more of the civil code sections. So because they establish uh, occupancy and then if there was some type of indifference where you allow that to happen, that's how we get into these situations. So um, law enforcement uh, would have to act pretty quickly once they know there's a trespass uh, and squatting going on. Otherwise you establish a situation where there is residency and a right to some type of possession and therefore we end up with these elongated incidents. So do you only do that at the invitation or the asking of the building? Yes, you can only do that with the complaint of the owner of the property. Was the back of the building or house uh, boarded up areas that we couldn't see? The, what the, uh, you mean fortified? Fortified. Yes, they were. The back door was fortified. I mean, did you fortify it? Yes, we did. We did fortify it. Plywood? Yes, plywood. And, and like I said, you, you could probably kick the plywood off and go in there uh, if, you, if you really wanted to. Uh, hopefully nobody does that. But uh, we did talk to uh, several residents uh, in the area. Uh, many of you had interviewed some of the neighbors, but some of the neighbors were actually very happy that we uh, had come in and done the eviction. They were getting very tired of the tremendous amount of traffic that was going on in the neighborhood and some of the issues that came along with uh, hosting this uh, protest every day. Do you know, I know you're not with PD, but do you know if they're going to have a squad car out there? And if not, I don't think, I, I, I don't know, uh, but I don't think that the Oakland Police Department is going to spend a tremendous amount of time sitting in front of that house. I think uh, if someone chooses to go back in there, the owner can call. They can request Oakland uh, make an arrest if anybody goes in and reoccupies. Um, just to clarify, you said the reason for having all of those deputies and the response that you designed, as you said, was because of this movement. Otherwise, an eviction would have been what, maybe two, three? A, a typical eviction is just uh, two to three deputies, you know, and we do uh, an assessment of each eviction. And if, if depending on what the, the threats are, um, you know, we adjust from there. This is not your typical eviction. Uh, I think we can all recognize that. This is, a, uh, this is something that swelled into an enormous movement with a tremendous amount of people that created a, a series of concerns for safety on a number of levels. So we had to go in there with the right tools. I think we handled this very professionally. I feel that we did a, a great job and the fact that we got out of there without any significant issues um, is a testament to the professionalism of our people. Do you know when they're gonna be arraigned? Uh, these are misdemeanor uh, uh, arrests, so they'll either be cited or given a court date, um, and uh, we'll let you know. Santa Rita, and then Santa Rita, yeah, I, I'm not sure if these are citable offenses, but they can either bail. The bail is pretty low on a uh, uh, obstruction arrest. But they'll get processed over in Santa Rita. Uh, yes, they will get booked into Santa Rita. They're probably there about now. I heard there was some kind of a robot deployed in the house as well. Is that true? Yes, we did. Uh, we did put a robot in. Um, one of our, our things that we do uh, in, in a situation like that is we want to kind of start remote, stay remote uh, and not 
create a situation where we're going to get into some type of escalation of force. So we try to use technology. Uh, we used the, the robot just to go in, look around, um, and it was able to give us information and kind of give us a little bit of a layout. And so um, the people in there saw that and uh, it helped us, you know, just it's just a tool that we use. And so it helps uh, de-escalate situations and helps um, give us a little bit more information as to when we go into a structure. There weren't any weapons. We did not see see any weapons or any type of contraband uh, in, in the house that was of so concern. So it's not that you were initially worried about what was there. What do you, you what? No, like you know how you said you had gotten information of like there could be. Well, I, I, I we didn't expect them there to be you know to be a, a cache of weapons in there or anything like that or uh, anything. So that was not never a concern. But there were there were people on the periphery outside of the home that we saw coming and going uh, with with backpacks with. Um, clothing and other uh, methods and to hide their identity. They're people that we've often encountered in some of the protests that we've seen throughout the Bay Area. And, and they are uh, often associated with uh, disorder and uh, disorderly conduct. Can you estimate how much your enforcement action and the fortification of the house is going to cost taxpayers? Uh, I, can t I, c I can tell you that the... Uh, it definitely will cost money. We actually have discussed uh, going back at, at the corporation that owns the home and charging them for all of the fees that have been associated with this. And so that is something we're looking at. Uh, it's sending the corporation a bill for all of our services that, that we provided. Um, and that will be uh, probably in the thousands and thousands of dollars. Uh, and uh, hopefully we can recoup some of that cost. Tens of thousands? Tens of thousands of dollars have gone into this uh, situation. I know it's like technically it wasn't a tank. Maybe you have another label for it, but the impression for people who don't know the difference yeah. between well, it, it, what things look like, it like to the public, it looked like a SWAT team, a, a tactical army team, because they had those kind of things. Can you address that? I guess. Well, first off, uh, we're we're law enforcement. We're not the military, and so we don't have tanks. We don't have armored. You know, cars. We we do use ballistic vehicles. They help keep us safe uh, when we have to go into areas. They also allow us to put victims in there and transport them to hospitals. And it, they also allow us to, to store our equipment. So uh, uh, they're often described as these military type vehicles, but they're not. Um, they are. Uh, there's no offensive weapons on those vehicles. They're strictly for protection. And so they're ballistic vehicles. Uh, they're routinely used uh, throughout the country every day to keep people safe.